Welcome to Brightfest, Stuart Urban, the writer director of May I Kill You. Thank you. Uh, that's a new, I suppose you call it a London based urban thriller uh, about a killer cop. Yeah. Where did you get the idea? The London riots play a part in this film. Uh, were you inspired by the London riots or were you, were you already working on the film when they took place last year? I was working on the idea of a, of a cop who um, w believed when he goes rogue that you know, he has the solution to crime, which is to offer arrest or death to all these uh, people he comes across that are meriting arrest. And um, the, the riots happened after I'd done some work on the idea. Uh, until that point, he had been dealing with gangs. Mm. But then the riots became a much bigger thing and also produced this huge demand or interest in citizens protecting themselves, vigilantism, you know, what is wrong with our society. So, of course, it was the perfect catalyst for a, a rogue cop to kick, you know, for it all to kick off. Um, so that's why I then, we responded very quickly uh, and we had uh, some brave camera people out in the riots shooting them for us, you know, with our angle, uh, which, thanks to the marvels of social media, which of course this film is partly about, uh, we said, would anyone like to go and shoot the riots for us, please? And we had like quite a few brave people who went out there with their, with their cameras and shot them and uh, survived. Now, your, your lead in the film is Kevin Bishop, who plays uh, police officer Baz. He's a, he's a cycle cop. Um, was he your first choice for the role? Well, he wasn't, Kevin wasn't actually the first choice. We aimed at a couple of really big names who, you know, duly... Uh, turned their nose up, um, and um, when the, then you start to look at who are the really good actors in Britain who have a sense of humour and mm. comedy, but can really deliver a proper acting performance. And uh, Kevin um, came to the rescue. Yes, he was he was uh, intrigued. He he didn't quite know how I wanted to play it, so we kicked around the idea in the audition that you know you could play it straight or it could be a bit funnier, and and so it was a really great audition. Um, and it was a tough choice because there was another well-known actor um, between him, between those two, and we were really agonising, uh, I and the team, and um, eventually we went with Kevin, which we're very glad we did. He's terrific. It, it's a very blackly comic film, and he does, he toes the straight line. Thank you, yes. He, he absolutely pitches it right, I believe. He is, uh, has that rare skill of being a genuine serious actor and a genuine comic, of which there are not many, you know, who can really pull off both. So he's acted in sort of classy European art films, or he's in Stefan Elliott's A Few Best Men, you mm. know, a very the guy who did Priscilla Queen in the Desert, and, and, and um, you know, and he's in your more kind of mainstream comedies like the Keith Lemon movie, but, but in our film, obviously it's very different to both those, and he wanted to try something different and go for it, and I think he really does. Yeah. Why did you make him a cycle cop rather than a, you know, police car? Well, I'm a cyclist, you know, and it's a kind of I've cycled in London for 20 years, um, and uh, I think that when you start to notice that there are bicycle cops who look really funny, you know, I mean, I I, I did put a cycling bob in an earlier film of mine, which was at that time they wore the tall hats and you know cycle clips, and then I just think there's something so absurd about particularly an unarmed. British cycle policeman on what is actually a Smith and Wesson bike. Yes, <laughs> I kid you not, they are made by Smith and Wesson. And uh, it was just, you know, when I saw that, I just fell about laughing. And this, this has to be the way that, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a, a cycle cop would do it. You know, so so uh, he he would do it for me because it's absurd. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. it's hilarious in the film. You mentioned social media. I mean, social media is a big part of the film. You know, the, yeah. um, the killer uses Facebook, he uses Twitter, he uses YouTube. You know, um, if social media didn't exist, you know, how would you have done this differently? Right. I think that since Jack the Ripper, you know, and the yellow press, as it was called then, the tabloids, as they call them now, I mean, since that time that there was a press that criminals could get into with their exploits, whether they were vigilantes, I mean, Jack presumably thought he was, you know, had a crusade against prostitutes and, and then the, ki the serial killers are normally either thrill killers or lust killers uh, or they have a mission so there's kind of three varieties as far as I'm able to work it out I'm not uh, no trained psychiatrist but um, 
the social media now merely expands in a kind of uh, nuclear, it's gone nuclear really, of what can happen, how quickly it can all react. You had the Batman killer. Since I wrote the film, you had Anders Breivik go on Facebook on the day of his terrible slaughter. Uh, Mohammed Mehra, the Islamist terrorist slash serial killer killing uh, children on, on, on camera. Uh, he tried to post it on social media, luckily. Uh, the channel he sent it to refused um, before he was killed in the shootout. And, um, and then uh, uh, this guy Rocco in Canada uh, filming live murder on, on his webcam and posting it and the video was up for quite some time. So I mean this has all happened since I wrote the film. So, so I wrote the script about a year ago I mean, and then refined it but you know it, it's, it's, uh, it's happening and the social media aspect of the film do make it I suppose particularly timely, and I don't think it'll be long before we have like a full-blown, fully integrated serial killer operating across, you know, quite a few platforms with his web, with his GoPro or his contour camera. Yeah, well, Bez uses Twitter in the film. Yes, who allowed us to use their name, thank God. Whereas Facebook and YouTube were snooty, so we called them Bookface and U Pipe in the film, um, and. You know, they're just prats, you know, I mean, it's like, they should be grateful for anything that actually boosts social media. But um, Skype allowed us to use them, which is nice of them. Thank you, Skype, <laughs> uh, for our serial killer to operate on. So I hope they didn't regret it. But yeah, I mean, it's like we did whatever we could. And all those tweets in the film are there, you know, in, in, in the blogosphere, yeah. Yes, we should say the account is... Uh, I can't remember the name of the account. Um, the Twitter account. It's uh, at Enforce the Law. Enforce the Law, that's right. But N, N numeral N 4, C E, the Law. The law. Uh, that is him, yeah. So you can see his ranting. So he's been ranting about, you know, all these killers, so the riots and the sentences. So he'll go on and talk about Breivik. He'll, <laughs> he'll talk about anyone, actually, that tickles his fancy and. Uh, and uh, What's wrong with society? So he's out of there ranting still. Yeah, and you've um, you've worked on the bill, so I'm guessing you brought all your experience filming police to this film. Yeah, I, I with the bill, you know, they used to send directors out um, on the bill, and who normally get thoroughly bored because they they sent them out to dull areas. I went into the most violent. I, I tell you, I filmed in the Bronx with the gangs and stuff, and this was tougher. Um, uh, this was Plasto and East Ham. And I went out with actually a cop on whom Val is based, a female policewoman, big girl, you didn't mess with her. And um, <clears throat> we, we were attacked by a bunch of lads. Um, um, and, <clears throat> you know, it was a time when she could announce, uh, she had been attacked by this guy and uh, I was left there wondering what I should do, you know, guardian reader as she's on the ground being kicked, saying, help me. I mean, even this big woman was brought down by these criminals. And um, luckily, the police arrived that moment and, and helped us. We were all surrounded then by the local residents who were throwing bottles and things. Uh, we dropped fridges if they could and stuff like that. So it was like a war. And, and you know, anyone who thinks that Britain is just a tranquil <laughs> you know, land compared to some other countries is wrong. But it depends where you are. But no, I, I'd seen this stuff on the street. Val, the Val character, took this little rascal. Uh, uh, it was wor worse than rascal. He, you know, he was going to attack me when he, you know, he said, "Come on, can you know?" And and uh, that's how literally that moment the helicopters and stuff arrived. So so um, uh, you know, I was very lucky. Oh, yeah, I'd seen that. And and working with the police, I'd also worked on in emergency modes. You know, rushing around. And they weren't police cyclists at that time on the streets. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'd seen a lot of that happen. Yeah. And do you think the, uh, the events that happened in the film, you know, a, a cop going vigilante, do you think that could actually happen? Well, I think, obviously, more often you might get a cop who just goes corrupt, um, which is there's really a difference. But I'm sure that, um, in a way, society used to maybe condone the odds of the, the clip around the mm. ear or, um, you know, the kids getting a good thump from the, from the policeman which is far off vigilantism, and of course it can go much worse than that. But I, I think that fortunately in Britain, 
I don't think that police vigilantes, as opposed to some other countries, you know, where you're like real serious drug war problem in Brazil or Mexico, I don't think we've got a massive problem. I mean, there may be a lot of bad apples, and maybe the police were institutionally corrupt or racist at times, but I, I don't think you've got a widespread problem of them taking the law into their hands and, and you know, killing victims or even seriously injuring them, you know. But, yeah, I'm sure they victimise people. Mm. Well, May I'll Kill You has just had its world premiere at Five Fist, and it is getting a theatrical release. Yes, the film is coming out for sure, uh, theatrically, in uh, January. You know, we've had such good audience reactions at previews, and uh, it's coming out, which is great, and, and is selling, actually, across two territories abroad, so that's, that's cool. Um, it's not too English, you know, for the foreign audience, true. So, Joe, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Game cut. Thank you.